Cricket has changed so much over the course of its lifetime that there are some things we as coaches teach that don't hold up anymore or has improved over the course of its lifetime. So in today's video, we'll be covering three cricket technique myths that are sometimes getting taught and why we believe they are wrong. Myth number one is rolling your wrists on contact when playing the pull or cut shot. Before you leave, because we know some of you might say, but coach, if I don't roll my wrists, how am I gonna keep the ball down? You don't need to worry, let me explain. When we roll our wrists, when playing the pull or cut shot, it is definitely true that we keep the ball down to the ground, but at the expense of some power. We can get the exact same result without any loss of power by simply adjusting our swing arc. Rolling your wrists on impact reduces the contact duration between ball and bat as the bat is almost sliding or rolling over the point of contact. When we reduce the contact duration, we don't compress the ball as much as we can, resulting in a decrease in power. You may ask, how do we keep the ball down without rolling our wrists? It's really very simple. Make sure you get your hands nice and high, preferably higher than your shoulder and hit from a high to low angle through the point of contact. By doing this, the natural angle of the bat will force the ball down to the ground without you needing to roll your wrists. Another awesome thing about doing this is because we're not rolling our wrists, we've got maximum contact duration between bat and ball, resulting us compressing the ball a lot more, leading to an increase in power. Please note, there is a massive difference between rolling your wrists on contact and rolling your wrists far after contact. The one is to help you keep the ball down to the ground and the other one is to help prevent you getting injured while completing the shot. Before we head into myth number two, I'd like to pull on your heartstrings. So ignore everything we've said up until this point. Roll your wrist, extend that finger and hit that like button. Myth number two is having big strides when playing your front foot shots. One of the big things we as coaches want is for our players to have good intensity in the movement and for you as a player to get into the best position possible. But this does not mean having overly big strides. If you look over here, you can see the difference between having good intensity in the left hand clip and having a lack of intensity in the right hand clip. Both of these shots had a very similar stride length, but the intensity behind the shots were completely different. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can actually talk about stride length. The problem with having overly big strides is that you can't get your head forward and over the point of contact. This causes you to kind of have to reach for the ball and hit it in front of your eyes, which could cause a lot of problems. The perfect stride length is completely player dependent and is what basically feels the most comfortable while being able to get your head over the point of contact. As long as you can get your head in line with the ball and make contact as close to underneath your eyes, you will be fine. Please note, you do need at least a small stride because this will help you be more compact when you play your strokes, which helps you eliminate gaps between your body and your bat in the execution of your shots. The last myth we'll be covering in this video is also a footwork myth and possibly the most controversial of them all. Myth number three is moving back and across while playing the pull shot. The main reason coaches teach players to move back and across when playing the pull shot is to make sure they get their head in the line of the ball, which is completely fine. We have also taught this in the past, but it's only applicable to slower pace bowling and a lower level of cricket. As you increase levels and the speed and skill of the bowlers you face increases, and as it increases, you have less time to react and less time to move. It gets to a point where the ball will almost be past you by the time you've moved back and across. Now we know what you are going to ask, and that would be, at that speed, don't you still have to step far forward for your front foot shots and back and across when you play your cut shots? So what's the difference? The big difference is in the contact point needed to successfully execute the shot. When we look to play front foot shots, we're looking to make contact as close to underneath our eyes as possible. And when we look to play a cut shot, we're looking to play the ball late, almost in line or slightly behind our back shoulder. In all of these shots, we're almost waiting for the ball to get to us. In contrast, when we play a pull shot, we need to almost go fetch the ball, making contact in front of our head with arms extended. Because of this, the bat has a further distance to travel to the contact point, which takes a lot more time than any of the other mentioned shots. Ideally, all we need to do is have a nice solid base, 
and shift our head and momentum to get our head as close to the line of the ball as possible. Thank you for watching this video. If you do enjoy our videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification so you can see all our videos as they release. Please check out this video if you want to improve your batting balance. And finally, a big thank you to the following members that make these videos possible. Ray, Aaron, Zelia, Hammer, Stanio, Rajesh and Manalisi.